but today she is here. Oh, I don't like what you are doing. What you are doing? Let us celebrate. The first lady of the Remnant Christian Network family. Reverend Mrs. Dina Osai. Kina Lorisa. Mommy, God bless you. We are so grateful and thankful for your life. And we are happy to have you in Ghana. In fact, our mother is a mother. And you can, you can understand why many things happen in the ministry. Hallelujah. Some of these things, when we say it, they say we, we, are, we are exaggerating. But the truth of the matter is that if there's no peace at home, oh my God. <laughs> Do I have witnesses in the house? I declare the peace of God over your life. I said I declare the peace of God over your marriages and your homes. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Please take your seat. Amen. They say I shouldn't say it, but I've said it. There is nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah. At least I'm in charge tonight, right? All right. God bless you. And uh, we have our online pastor. Um, the man who has been working very hard. Oh. Pastor Philip B. A wonderful brother. Let us celebrate him. Very hard working. Very hard working. You know, sometimes the pressure becomes so much and, and I feel for my brother. I remember when we visited them in Nigeria last month, I saw the work. And I, I knew that it is God that is helping him. Hallelujah. May God also help you. And may you be available for the use of the master. In the name of Jesus. We have Mama's P also in our midst. Coming all the way. Let's give it out to our sister. Please, let's do it better. The two PAs are in the house. They can tell you the pressure that they have to go through. And what our daddy and our mommy would go through every day. If daddy is not sleeping, Philip is not sleeping. If mommy is not sleeping, our dear sister Musu will also not sleep. Let's do it better for her. They deserve, they deserve it. Hallelujah. Are we set tonight to roll? I put the heat in the house already. And uh, something is going to explode tonight. I ask that with a clap and with a shout, let's bring our father, our dear father, our only father, apostle, Arome, Osai. Your shout is too low. You know, the presence of God here, my God, Ghana is a great nation. And I believe that the Spirit of God is trying to forge out a weapon, a weapon that will undo the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you possess this atmosphere. Let the weight of your glory descend amidst us. Let
that the atmosphere become easy for you to do what you have in mind and be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. We were trying to do some definition of terms in the morning. And we saw the first category of prophets. They are prophets of Baal. And they function by the spirit of divination. And we took a lot of time to analyze the operations of divination using a classical example in the Bible. And we are doing this exposition so that we can educate the body of Christ to have the capabilities of discerning and deciphering the spiritual things happening in the space so that each and every one of us can be um, adequately armed with the knowledge needed to avoid corruption. The second set of prophets in the scriptures are what we call the prophets of Ashtaroth. And, uh, that is the God that Jezebel worshipped. And there were prophets that were assigned to practice uh, the priesthood after that order. If you find something in scripture, it is prophetic. It is, it is giving you an insight into a tributary that will be consistent to the earth. And so the prophets of Baal operate by divination and we saw their characteristics. And when we began to unveil it, for a few of us in the auditorium, it began to strike a bell. The reason is because God in his prophetic nature has already set out um, the pattern of things, the template of things. So whenever there is error, if we study the Bible adequately, you will find the Bible revealing and warning about that error even before time. Now, the next category is what we call the prophets of Asteroid. Like I said, that is the God that um, Jezebel worshipped. Astaroth happens to be the seducing goddess of war. So there are two aspects to the oppression of Astaroth. First of all, there is seduction, and secondly, there is war. There is war. And you need to be more skillful in dealing with this kind of oppression, this kind of tributary. It's more subtle. And I believe that God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. We need to use a typical uh, example. Something we'll find around the book of uh, Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus was tempted. I would like you to look at that scripture as we attempt to understand a few things. Are you there? In Matthew chapter number 4. I want to talk about the seduction aspect. And we are going to be very snappy because there is a practical aspect at the end of this lecture. So we'll be doing theory and practical. We'll do theory and practical. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now, I would like us to do a good analysis of the first temptation of Jesus. Wonderful analysis. It will give you an insight into the oppression of the spirit of seduction. You are likely to survive divination when you see it. But this is more subtle. And we need to be skillful men of the spirit to be able to discern it. So the Bible says... There was a schedule, an appointment that Jesus had in the wilderness. And the appointment was that he was ordained by God to be tempted of the devil. It's needful for us to take a look at the scenario that led to his dispatch into the wilderness. 
It was around the baptism of John. And we said it this morning that the purpose of the baptism of John was to identify the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and in fire. And so when Jesus came out of the water during John's baptism, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. And when the Spirit descended upon him, the voice of the Father from the excellent glory bore witness about the identity of Jesus. That was like an accreditation exercise. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. There are two sides to Jesus. His Sonship, which is his personality, and his ministry, which is the ministry of the Christ. And that were the two things that were unveiled by Peter in the great confession. Thou art the Christ. Referring to his ministry, the office he occupies in the spirit, the administrator of the purposes of God. He's the one that is installed in that capacity in the spirit and he took on that designation when he had satisfied the claims of divine justice and had returned into the heavens. He was assigned a throne at the right hand of God, which is the place of administration. And secondly, the Bible reveals that Jesus is the Son of God. We need to understand what God meant, what the Father meant when he said, this is my beloved Son. In the book of Hebrews, Chapter 1, the Bible says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. And in that presentation, you are going to see several ingredients that pertain to the Son. The first is that, are you there in verse 3? Sorry, verse 2. The Bible says, it is whom he has appointed heir of all things. He is the heir, he is the inheritor of all things. It is by him, still talking about the son, that the father made the world. Verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Still talking about the son. When the Bible says it's the brightness of the glory of God, it is indicative of the fact that he is the clearest definition of God. There was no aspect of God that was obscured in the manifestation of Jesus Christ. Jesus put God on display. And just in case you were having a challenge, like those guys had a challenge when they caught a woman in the act of adultery and forget, forgot to arrest the man that was part of the exercise. And then brought had to Jesus and quoted from the law of Moses, uh, according to the law of Moses, this woman should be stoned to death. The only problem that was wrong with the arrangement, their quotation was correct. The woman did not deny that she was in, caught up in adultery. The only thing that was wrong with the arrangement was that the people that were about to enforce the law of Moses did not have the stature to enforce it. So Jesus now said, okay, if there's any among you that has not sinned, the challenge now is we need to reckon with your stature if it is consistent with what is required for you to pros prosecute justice at this level. And unfortunately, uh, the shortfall in the arrangement was the enforcement. And in that arrangement, it was only Jesus that had the stature to enforce that law. And Jesus decided to show her mercy, not because he was robbing justice. It was because in a few, few days after that time, he was going to the cross to satisfy justice. You see, in that scenario, we see the Son of God manifesting the ways of God. And every aspect of the mind of God that was obscured in the law, in that presentation, we could see how that the Son of God was able to manifest clearly the perspective and the witness about the position of God in that particular context. Until Jesus came, God was still a mystery. But when Jesus manifested, people could consult 
the opinion of God as they consulted in that situation. People, people could access the mind of God because in the book of John chapter 9, the Bible says that one guy was born blind and they came to Jesus because this, the, the disciples were undergoing tutelage. They were undergoing education and they came to Jesus with a master class question and say, who sinned that this man was born blind? And Jesus reached out and reached back into hallowed antiquity and said it was not the man that, was, that sinned Neither has his parents seen. Hallelujah. Because Jesus was physically present, they could come and consult him like an encyclopedia. And in every instance, it was the perspective of God that he unveiled. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. That is the clearest definition of God. So when we talk about the Son of God, we are talking about the definition of God. The one that comes to bring clarity about the things of God. He comes to bring, bring visibility into the heart and the mind of God. It is through him we can stumble upon God's opinion, God's perspective, God's idea, and God's wisdom. So in him, God is demystified. In him, God is absolutely expressed, and there is no aspect of God that is diminished in him. So the Bible calls him the brightness of the glory of God. So it took the father to come accredit Jesus. This one is my beloved son in whom I'm where. Please. There is a testimony of alignment, of submission, of obedience, of carrying out the pleasure of the Lord in that witness that came from heaven. Are you still with me? I don't have time to take you on. There is a word there that I cannot... I don't have the time to break, which is called the image, the image of God. No time to break that. Well, so accreditation took place in Jordan. And the moment he was accredited, the Bible revealed that the Holy Spirit drove him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. It was when he came into the wilderness. I hope you know the subject matter. The subject matter is his sonship because the father had already proclaimed him son. So when... He came into the wilderness and he came before the tester came. He came before Satan came and began to fast and pray. He didn't come to the wilderness to fast and pray. He came there to be tempted. But he arrived the testing ground before the, te the, the tester and he subjected himself to fasting and prayer. What's the meaning of that? You are not with me. Fasting was a strategy adopted so that it would be difficult for the environment to affect him. It was an attempt to starve the flesh. If you find a woman that talks too much in the night, she's describing people's head, that their head is like, like this. Put her on three days dry fasting. On the fourth day, go there with someone's big head. She will lack vocabulary. She will lack utterance. May the Lord give you understanding. So fasting was a strategy to ensure that his flesh was weakened. So there will be nothing in the flesh that will be exploited by the visitation of the devil. When the devil comes, he exploits your appetites. He exploits your inclinations. He exploits every desire of the flesh. And unfortunately, you feed flesh when you eat too much. So when you starve flesh, he cries and he becomes quiet. So Jesus wanting to meet with a spirit because the tempter here is not a human being is a spirit being he advised himself that the way in the, of out of this matter is to fast so fasting makes it difficult for the environment to influence you and prayer makes it easy for you to influence the environment so the strategy was fasting and what prayer The Bible says that after the 40 days, 40 nights of fasting, afterward, he was unhungered. And when the tempter came, the object of temptation was his status that was declared from heaven. If indeed you are the son of God. We've been hearing you calling yourself son of God, son of God, son of God. We from the underworld, we have no knowledge of that designation. But if you are willing to prove that you are the son of God, 
you can start by turning these stones to bread. Why was the temptation about bread? It was because he had fasted for 40 days. And afterward, he was what? And hunger. Seduction takes advantage of a weakness that is available. When Satan comes your way, he's going to check you out. He's going to look upon you from head to foot. And he is likely to find something to exploit. Satan wants to play a fast one on your life by exploiting your weakness. He knows that if he comes against you in, in the area of your strength, ah... Uh, He's not good at fighting. He's not good at war. Normally, he goes around like a roaring lion, but he's not a roaring lion. He takes advantage of the roar, but he can't really fight. So if he wants to penetrate you, he looks for a weakness. So that day, the weakness was hunger. Because in trying to stuff his spirit and to starve his flesh, he went the way of fasting. Are you with me? But you see that in the physical hunger that Jesus subjected himself to in fasting, we could see that the, his spirit was stronger than the weakness of his hunger. And the Bible says that the spirit of a man shall sustain his infirmity. So he found occasion to preach to the devil. He said, are you aware that I was there in the beginning when we sat in council to design man. The idea about man, the vision about man was not so that he will live by bread only. Man was supposed to be a creature that will live and to fulfill every revelation that comes out of the mouth of God. That's the purpose of man. He preached to Satan. That hunger is secondary. The reason why I will not eat is because the Lord has not commanded that I eat. So Jesus was operating on a level where seduction could not penetrate him because he was a man that was set under authority and his reference point was the will of his father. As long as you are stuck with the will of God, it will be easy, difficult for Satan to seduce you. Maybe you are someone that grew up in a very humble background and you have always had the desire that one day I'm going to have so many CDs, billions of CDs. I will ride the big vehicles that the smaller ones will be cautioned to come close because if you hit the tire, the tire alone can buy that vehicle. A, a, a vehicle that is insulated from accident because... You don't want to pay the insurance. The insurance body of that vehicle is something you don't want to get involved. So I want to ride that one. And then put the lights on in, day, in daytime and on at the filling station. Hallelujah. So that's the desire you have because of your background. You're looking for an opportunity to shine. And if Satan locks around your, your life, a little longer, he will find your lost. And what Asteroid does is that it takes you on the plane of your lost. That's number one. Then number two, if you are someone that is yielded to the authority of heaven and you are not willing to bend because there is something superior to your immediate need, there's something superior to your immediate concern, there's something superior to your hunger. There is something superior to your test. Something superior to you. You are living for him. That's the only cure against seduction. Number two. When this spirit sees that there is no weakness that can be exploited, he changes to become a god of war. And he uses threats and curses. There are so many people that are members of churches today because they fear that if they make a decision to leave, that the general overseer is equipped with the ability to rain causes, potent, bitter, effective arrow causes. So, <laughs> hallelujah. 
So he's, he's there not because he feels it in the spirit. He's there because of intimidation. The God of war will want to use the roaring dimension to keep people outside of the will of God. Let me give you a scripture. Let's do Psalms 55 verse 21. Psalms 55 verse 21. The words of his mouth but war is in his heart. It comes with words that are softer than oil but in his heart they are what? They are drums. So if you survive the soothing words then he brings the dimension of swords. And if you are easily intimidated because you don't have a God, you become a slave. There is no one that served the king that didn't have to fight. Because there was war in heaven, that's why there's war on earth. May the Lord give you understanding. Before we go into the characteristics, of charismatic witchcraft. Oh, it, it sounds strange. <laughs> okay. Let me give you an idea. I can use the gift of word of knowledge to rob you. I can pray in tongues for a minute if we want to do some practical, and I will know some things about your system. Pro and probably know how much you have in that your bag. How many CDs? Eh? And I can tell you, you have this amount of CDs. Then I will now tell you my own, that the Lord has need of it. <laughs> the gift was right, but I used it not for God's glory, I used it to rob. So, it is controlled using spiritual things. That's charismatic witchcraft. Now, before we go into that, I, I know you are not, you are surprised. You see, this purging process has surprise in it. It has all kinds of things. But the, the name of the process is purging. If we saturate everywhere with truth, falsehood will die a natural death. There will be no exit. There will be no day to acknowledge the exit of falsehood. It will just fade away. That's what we are trying to do. Before we do that, I'd like to take you on a journey. A journey into the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. This, I want you to see with your own eyes. Don't believe me. So I want us to go on a journey right now. We'll begin this journey by touching the book of Ezekiel chapter 22 from verse 24 to 26. Ezekiel 22 verse 24 to 26. The purpose of this journey is a guided tour to the spirit realm to build discernment. That is the objective of the journey. We want to build your discernment. Because there is going to be a second wave of the prophetic move in the nation of Ghana. And we are trusting God that that wave will not be corrupted. That wave will not be translated into materialism that wave will not end up in the mundane corridors. Because Ghana did not benefit so much from the first prophetic wave. The fabrics of your society have not been influ influenced by, by what God had in mind. What God had in mind was supposed to influence your politics, influence your society, influence your education. But the errand of that move did not reach its terminus. And now the Lord has sent us to redig those wells and to build the possibilities in the future on an apostolic truth so that it will be easy for the average believer in the body of Christ in this nation and beyond to detect when the devil wants to masquerade as an angel of light. Are you there? Exodus, no? Ezekiel 22. 
Just wait for me to open my Bible. Ezekiel 22, verse number 24. Please, let's go carefully. I won't waste your time. Just to make you see something. If you can see it, then I'm done. Son of man, say unto her, Thou at the land that is not cleansed, not, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey, they have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and the precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. This is an indictment against prophets. He said, her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. And neither have they showed difference between the clean and the unclean. And have hid their eyes from my servants. And I am profaned among them. I'd like us to see the charge against the prophets and the priests of the land. The Bible says they have made no difference between the clean and the unclean. They have made no difference between the holy and the profane. And that was the charge, that was the indictment that God had against the priests and the prophets. Whenever a nation is losing its prophetic cutting edge, you will find this, this situation that I just read now. You begin to see that there is no demarcation between false and real. There's no demarcation between holy and profane. There's no demarcation between the clean and the unclean. Everyone will be modeled up as a minister. You'll find so many scandals. When God is about to get a return on investment, it's about to profit from the situation, then there'll be a scandal. And the hearts of men are being hardened against the things of God. Because there is no demarcation. There is no difference. And that was God's indictment on the prophet. I need to show you something quickly. You know, I told you we need to take a journey into the realm of the spirit. Once upon a time, um, a lady got married and they had a little baby. So because of the little baby, the lady is working class, the husband is working class. They had to get a maid that will help out with, you know, all the many duties, the chores that come around welcoming a new child. You, all mothers in this house know what I'm talking about. They brought this lady. She was just 12 years old, very hardworking. She could walk all night. She was very strong-willed, and she would never see anything wrong that she would not take care of. The house was clean. The baby was okay. Everything was happening. But unfortunately, she was initiated into witchcraft when she was about four years old. You see, something can be so close to you. Are you here? You are not here? You are not here? You are not here? Do you realize that a witch can live close to you and you will not know for five years, for seven years? The only way you can understand something that is so close to you is that you go high in the spirit. Very high. And tonight we need to go high. Because your attempt to interpret situations from ground level will be futile. There are two irreconcilable civilizations that we find in the book of Revelation. And we need to look upon it diligently and do an analysis. It's going to help our discernment. If you are still with me, say Amen. Amen. So our first scripture reading on this adventure will be Revelation chapter 17 from verse 1 to 5. 
you will see the first civilization. And then we'll read Revelation chapter 21 from verse 10. And we'll see the second civilization. What you call your ministry is either a manifestation of Revelation 17, 1 to 5, or a manifestation of Revelation 21, 10 and onward. You see, but if you see it from human standpoint, it, it may look similar. But if we see it from the spirit, there are worlds apart. So who is there with me? Revelation 17. Quickly. So that we can move into the practical aspect. Because the things that are hidden tonight, God will bring them to light. Yeah. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that seated up upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a red colored, a, upon a scarlet colored beast full of the names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her head was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots abom and abominations of the earth. Don't forget this name. Hallelujah. Do you realize that in order for him to see the reality of this beast, he had to be carried away into the wilderness. He was carried away in the spirit and was led where? Second city. Revelation Chapter 21. Quickly. Then we'll do an analysis. Quickly. Verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Oh my God. Let me stop there. Let me stop there for now. We can't go beyond jasper. We'll stop at jasper. Because I am aware you don't have capacity to, to receive. So let's be given two loaves of bread in the morning Two loaves of bread in the night. We'll stop at Jasper. These are, these are prophetic speakings that are in metaphors of the spirit. Are you with me? All right. Okay. So the first city that we saw was called Babylon the Great. The second city that we read about is called the New Jerusalem descending from heaven. The substance, the essence of your ministry is rooted in one of these civilizations. You are either, your ministry is either set up to implement Babylon and to establish what is in that city that is in the wilderness, or it is a platform, a conduit pipe through which the city that is descending from heaven can be fast tracked. There is a civilization that God wants to bring from the heavens and he wants to establish it upon the face of the earth. And that's why Jesus gave us that prayer point, thy kingdom come. It, it's a city, it's a civilization that is a, intended by God to come from heaven, to descend from heaven into the earth. And your ministry is part of 
the outlets that any of these civilizations might have to be translated into concrete hard copy upon the face of the earth. Now, what I'm trying to do here is to give you an idea, a basis, a lens to judge. Do you understand that? You need a lens. You need a, a spectacle. You need new eyes. You need new lenses so that you can judge righteous judgment. Now, come with me. So I'd like you to do something quickly because we are going quite deep now. We were taught, you know, I was a classroom teacher. I was an educationist. I was trained to impart knowledge. I mean before imparting scripture. I am a trained educationist. And we were taught that if you hear, you will forget. If you see, you will remember. And if you will handle, you will understand. And because of that, we now began to design creative ways of passing knowledge. From the text in your book, we form charts, we form graphs, things that are concrete through which you can recall the trends, the patterns. So when I study scriptures, I try to make charts out of it. So that it's easy for you to capture it in a cerebral mode. And then when you are in tune with the Holy Ghost, he will shed light. Thy word have I hidden in my heart. It has a consequence in the day of temptation. May the Lord give you understanding. So I'd like you to draw a table. If you are, if you are joining with me in, in Bible study, I, I, I compare people to draw tables. <laughs> so that we can contrast and compare. And then you will find out that thing you call your ministry, what you're actually doing. You might be creating a premise for Babylon, to infiltrate Zion. That thing you call your ministry because we are going to see these civilizations and how they walk out, they, how they walk out, how they dominate, how they infiltrate. Are you here? This is the first level. There's another level that is higher than this, but we need to put up this level first. If we do the second level, you can actually name Ghana according to its spiritual name. You will name your village. You can go to Nogopo and name it rightly. Hallelujah. All right, so on one side of the column, put Babylon. On the other side of the column, put the New Jerusalem. So you are either establishing Babylon or you are establishing the new Jerusalem. The first thing that the scriptures will have us know about Babylon is that Babylon is called a harlot. This moment we need to define what spiritual harlotry is. Because if you begin to study about the spirit of Jezebel, you will hear the charge against the spirit of Jezebel is that... Uh, he makes, he seduces his servants. Wait, what's the charge? Revelation chapter 2. Let me give you the charge against Jezebel. Okay, look for it and tell me. I think it's Revelation 2, 18 or something. Quickly. What is the charge that God has against Jezebel? Somebody go there. Oh, you're not there. You're not fast. All right. Let me dash to. Two verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, first of all, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. What is halotry? Spiritual halotry. Now, please pass the mic. Where are the ushers? I think we, have, we should have some microphones that are available. Equip anybody in the congregation with a mic to give us a response. It's, it's a school. What is spiritual halotry? Because Babylon is identified in the spirit as a halot. Yeah? 
we can't hear you. What is spiritual? What is spiritual halotry? Oh. Okay, now the, the, the microphones are. Spiritual halotry is seven God and seven other gods. It's mixture. If you bring, are you here? You can switch off your mind. If you bring Jehovah and you mix him with the God of Iron, Jehovah will fade away. Jehovah cannot operate in the mixture. And so the easiest way to send Jehovah out of the template, out of the ecosystem, is to bring another thing and mix with Jehovah. Sometimes when we even see some posters that people inviting people for meetings, you, you see this person is from Ashtaroth. And then this one here is a man of God. You know that that meeting will not produce anything for God because it is carrying the touch of a mixture. If the devil knows that he cannot quench your fire, all he needs to do is to get you to relate intimately with someone that doesn't share your values. In five years' time, you will be diminished and your name will be blotted out. So part of the technology of the kingdom of darkness is to facilitate mixtures. Babylon is called the halot. I don't have time to take you to the source. And the source is Genesis chapter 4. Where this, the building blocks of Babylon was put in place. Are you still with me? Mm, I say, are you with me? Yeah. All right. So let me give you a recap. And I challenge you to go study the book of Genesis chapter 4. This lecture was supposed to, when we really get set for lecture, we'll come in the morning, we'll end by 4 p.m. Then we'll have the liberty to consult all the necessary scriptures so that every one of us will be clear, your doubts will be clear. Everything you find in the New Testament has its roots in Genesis. So we can trace it from the origin, then you'll get clearer visibility of the things that God is talking about. In the book of Genesis chapter 4, what happened was that Cain, when God judged him because of the death, the, the sin of murder, he departed from the presence of God. That means he said, I don't want to be under God's government anymore. I want to live my own life. I want to do my own thing. And then he decided to go establish a city, a civilization that will exist apart from God. So God will not have the right to come into that city to regulate anybody. God will not have the right to come into that place to say, don't do this, don't do that, don't kill. Anything goes in that civilization. That was the initial foundation of the building blocks of Babylon. When, we, when you check the civilization that Cain established, after five generations, then we have a man called Lamech. Lamech was the one that pioneered polygamy. Poly, polygamy. The first man to marry two wives. Even though Cain had left the presence of God, it took five generations of consistent decline for them to evolve polygamy. Are you with me? Everything in that civilization was determined to exist apart from the regulations of God. And then in the seventh generation, we now had other pioneers. People like Jabal, people like Tuba, people like Tuba Cain. It was Tuba Cain that began to de develop weapons of mass destruction. Because when they left the presence of God, they left the protection of God, and they needed to provide protection for themselves. And it was Tuba Cain that was raised in that genealogy. That was insightful. He had inspiration to deepen the civilization. He was the one that now developed weapons of mass destruction. As you go down the line, you'll see developments coming into the system until we get to the book of John. John now identifies that the system, that bogus system as the world. And that that world lieth in the wicked one. And in the book of Revelation is Babylon. It had grown into a zenith, a strength. It is a compendium of many mixtures. And so when John was taken into the spirit to look upon it, he named it a halot. Are you there? 
Whereas Babylon is a halot, the new Jerusalem is a bride. Part of what happened that made us enter into corruption without knowing is when we began to downplay the teaching of holiness and consecration. When we say something is holy, what do we mean? What's the meaning of holiness? Take, take the microphone round. You are going to see people with stammer here. Because in the last 35 years in Pentecostal Christianity, our emphasis has not, is not doctrine. Our emphasis is, is, let's go where they will call our name. Our phone number. Meanwhile, you know your name and you know your phone number. It has been hula baloo, just like that. Let's let the Holy Ghost take control. That's what it is. So when foul spirits were brought into the system, the, the discernment of the average believer was not it was non-existent. What is the meaning of holiness? Preaching. What? S separate. Separate. Yes. You see, you know what? He's giving us a textbook definition. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me help you, bro. If you ask me, I worked in public service for 16 years before I resigned. If you ask me, give me, give me an account of your experience in public service. Do you think I will stammer? Do you think I will give you a cerebral answer? Holiness is supposed to be your life. If you have lived it, you should be able to Talk about it, not that answer you give, cerebral. That's computer answer. It, it, you know, sometimes even, even your, it, on, on WhatsApp, your phone can recommend something. You'll say, this, you might answer like this. <laughs> Consecration. Consecration happens to be a requirement of the New Testament. I told you in the morning that tithing was a requirement of the Old Testament. 10% of your income. But unfortunately, because Jesus had to pay for your redemption, and he paid for all of you, so the requirement in the New Testament is consecration. What's the meaning of that? It means that nothing else will operate me. Only the Holy Ghost. That is, if you want to know the Holy Ghost, be looking at me. Because I am submitted to his will. Christianity is not, you know, what you received by faith. Are you with me? I hope you know that the container that brought your salvation is called grace. But the instrument through which it became yours was faith. Faith is the appropriation system that made it your possession. What you entered into by faith you will grow in by obedience. So the moment you give your life to Christ, you are called to obedience. It means that you will not survive by God's explanations. You will survive by God's instructions. And it is when you have obeyed that you will now understand why God gave you the instruction. Your understanding is going to be unfruitful while you are navigating the path because it's a call to obedience. And when you become used to obeying, are you with me? You begin to understand the depths of God. And when God begins to open your spirit to his depths, you will not want to lose your relationship with God. It will become precious to you. At that point, you are sold out. When Satan comes and advertises his products around you, there is something you have with God that you don't want to lose. And because of that, you don't want to offend him. Your life is captured in him. Your life is centered upon him. Your life is about giving expression to his will, knowing his will and executing his will. I am living for him. That's what holiness is. Your textbook definition of separate. The separation now comes when you are altogether swallowed up in him. It will be obvious by an onlooker that you are, you are separate from him. You are different from him. There is nothing he can do carnally, naturally, that can make him become like you. 
Because your experience is the outcome of a yieldedness, a submission. When God makes demands, you do not argue with him. For instance, my intention was to be a lecturer. While I was on campus, I had an unusual ability to cram. I can cram a textbook, cram a handout, and deliver it the way it is. I used to tell my colleagues that they were cursed because they read so much and they cannot retain. Memorize it, snap it, cram it. I finish cramming and I forget it and I pick the next one and cram. So I will make an A. And I was so proud because I felt I was the best guy. And when God wanted to help the boy, what he did is that I crammed one day and he touched the brain and the thing. So I had to battle with what was called carryover. Hey! I died. You see, in order for God to facilitate your submission to him, he knows the nerve, your nerve, the nerve upon which your rebellion is resting. Mm. Mm. So, <laughs> so he comes and he touches that nerve. Mine, it was intelligent. So he came and touched it. Then I now lost confidence in my intelligence. It is when you lose confidence in yourself that you can now have confidence in him. Some of you in this place, your beauty is your challenge. He will make you enter trotro in the front seat. And then the tire will just bust. And the only thing that will happen will affect your face. Is every your face, that your face. It will do something there. And you weep. That weep, the weeping is not because of the pain. You have lost your strength. <laughs> when you no longer have that confidence in yourself, it will be easier for you to depend on. Yes. And I want to tell you something. It, just like a normal sinner is different from a forgiving sinner, a normal Christian is different from a consecrated Christian. Because the new Jerusalem is a bride. It's a bride that is adorned for her husband. Meanwhile, Babylon is a harlot. It's a ground for mixtures. So when you find people, they started well, and then they now went to Nogopo to wash their eyes. That's a mixture. That vessel is, is polluted. The holy things of God can no longer rest there. And many of you are victims of occultic impartations. And strange people have laid their hands upon you. And uh, there are, there's access from the underworld. You see things that are not inspirations from God. Spirits come to infiltrate your thoughts. And all kinds of struggles with immorality and lust and pornography. Which was not the case before. But you became common. You became common because you were exposed to something that is not exclusively from heaven. Babylon. The Bible calls it a great city. A what? A great city. Huh. I would have touched the scripture, but it would take me time to convince you that that is what it means. A great city. How many of you still remember the book of Revelation? The book of Genesis? In the beginnings? There were two races of men. The first are the descendants of Cain. They were the ones that left the presence of God to establish a civilization apart from God. Guess what? In the book of Revelation chapter 6, and there was another category of people that did not leave the border of Eden. They were waiting for God to break through the lattice and to bring them for forgiveness. Those ones learned how to call upon the name of the Lord. These ones were living large. And in the book of Genesis chapter 6, the guys that were living large, they multiplied faster than the guys that were calling upon the name of the Lord. Initially, unrighteousness produces fast results. Corruption produces fast results. 
a tumor can grow very fast, faster than ordinary cells. So in the book of Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says, as men began to multiply, he was talking about the descendants of Cain. They were the ones that multiplied aggressively initially. Righteousness doesn't produce results quickly because the emphasis of righteousness is in your own personal alignment. But righteousness has the potential to produce something that is transgenerational. When God arrested a man and that man begins to conform with his requirements of consecration, then God begins to see generations ahead of him. So he uses you as a foundation to lay a template so that he can have a ground to stand for him to influence generations to come. Righteousness doesn't produce results quickly. If you want to reign by righteousness, you want to win by righteousness, you will need to understand what is called the process of time. But unrighteousness is quick, it's fast. You will see multiplication. And these are the days where people go out for results, anything that can produce results. If you are results driven, you are, so, you are soon going to be part of Babylon. Because Babylon is what? It's a great city. Guess what? The new Jerusalem is called the holy city. The separate city. The different city. Whereas Babylon celebrates great, the new Jerusalem celebrates holiness. We have a pure breed. The jealousy of our God is upon us. We have not mixed ourselves. We have not lost our sin. Our original sin resides in us. We mix, but we do not mean to mingle. The holy city. When you begin to go the path of holiness, people will call you a Jew guy, a Jew. If you have not yet earned a name on the path of your Christianity, it is because you compromise. The world has names for every set of people that decide to be different. The Bible said John the Baptist, he came neither eating nor drinking. The world system said he had a demon. And the son of man came eating and drinking. And they said, behold, a glutinous man. A wine biber and a friend of the publicans. Have you earned a name from the world? It means your light is not bright enough. There were people that came to me and said, you are foolish. Huh? Foolish? I didn't know. Sit down. Let's talk. I want to be rid of this foolishness. And they said, people listen to your messages. You can sell it. And the guy brought a graph. He showed me a permutation. This is what you'll make in a year. And because I'm the one that helped you, you give me this percentage. This little. Oh! There's... One of the people I was raising told other people that I can't manage greatness. Why? Because people from all over the world were contacting me and I was pointing them to Jesus. They said, God, man, the guy can't manage greatness. I was pointing them to Jesus. I was pointing them to Jesus. Instead of me to set up a system and begin to ask them to make monthly contributions, I'm there pointing he doesn't know my problem. That's why he will not follow me. You know what? My duty is to build men. I will never destroy any man. Never. If he becomes a rebel, I will leave him to God. The God that anointed him, let, it, let God destroy him. I will never, never destroy a man. I went to my friend, went to preach in Brazil, and we're praying. Ah, and my friend that invited me said, hmm. There's a young man in your midst. He will cause you pain. Two years before he rebelled. And I knew. But I told God, I will never destroy any man. Destroy them. If they rebel, I will not see anything. Ah, 
Let it be your work to destroy. Me, I'm here to build, and I will build till I die. Circumstances, situations, and suggestions will come to make you like Babylon. But we are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people. We are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. The moment we begin to diminish the emphasis of consecration and holiness and devotion to God will produce demons, beasts on the pulpit. And this beast will turn lively stones into bread. Babylon is common. It's everywhere. But the first thing that was spoken about the New Jerusalem were its walls. The walls were the first thing that were mentioned in that arrangement. Indicative of the fact that it is, it is a place that is defensed. You can't just penetrate. It has walls. You can walk into Babylon, any office you walk into. You walk into the government house. You, walk, you will see Babylon everywhere. But the New Jerusalem has walls. It is separate from the systems of this world. It is different. It is not just available. It is unique. This world cannot approximate it. This world cannot produce it. Number five, Babylon was in the wilderness. But the new Jerusalem was on a high mountain. How many of you still remember the book of uh, uh, Matthew chapter five? And in the book of Matthew chapter 5, what, what Matthew chapter 5 is about is that Jesus was about to unveil the constitution of the kingdom of heaven. And they came to the plain and there was a multitude. And because of the gravity of the things that Jesus wanted to communicate, he decided to raise the standard by climbing the mountain. It was a multitude that came to attend to him, but he decided to raise the standard. The moment he climbed the mountain, only 12 people were willing to climb. A multitude will always come if it's the plain. But when you begin to ascend the mountain, you will find the numbers will begin to diminish. Because the Christians of our time are not willing to pay a price for the things of the Spirit. That's why we are common. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul to vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation this is the generation of them that seek thee O god of jacob lift up your heads O ye gates and be thou lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in Are you willing to ascend the mountain? Are you willing to ascend the heights of spiritual discipline? To keep your vessel pure and undefiled in the midst of the corruption around? Because you want to ascend into a higher place. There are deep things that cannot be communicated in the valley. And Jesus had to raise the standard. It was when they got to the mountain top that he began to preach what we call the Beatitudes. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. He couldn't say that in the valley. He raised the standard. And in our generation, he raises the standard again. So that the demarcation between Babylon and the New Jerusalem will be so distinct that no one will confuse the one for the other. Finally, as I finish the theoretical aspect, 
There was a word in the Old Testament that I'll never want you to forget. It's called the high places. Do you remember that word? Do you know what that word is associated with? The high places. So I associated with idol worship. When you hear the high, the high places. Oh, I wish I had a map. My maps. To show you how corruption comes into Israel. The high places are temples. They are shanties. Built in the honor of strange deities and spirits. It is from those high places that corruption filters into Israel. And their pure faith in God is corrupted. Many things that happen in the name of the Lord right now are high places. The migration is from Babylon to the New Jerusalem. The Bible says that the appearance of the city was like Jasper. Do you know what Jasper is? The metaphor Jasper, you know what it means? Huh. Let me show you just Jasper. There are 12 precious stones, but we can only do Jasper. The ultimate proof that God is the one involved is that you will see Jasper. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 finally. And after this I looked, behold, the door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was at it, as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be here after. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, the throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like what? A jasper stone. Let me stop there. When we talk about jasper, the metaphor jasper, we mean the appearance of God. If I'm running a ministry that is new Jerusalem type ministry, then it will afford God the opportunity to appear through my ministry. God will have a platform to what? To appear. There are 12, 12 precious stones and 12 pearls. And each of them is a metaphor. The onyx. The, the beryl. It's a metaphor that speaks about the dimensions of the New Jerusalem. And why is it that I'm talking about the New Jerusalem? It's because Jesus was the one that said, Ye are the light of the world. Jesus said, Ye are a city that is set upon an hill, the New Jerusalem. He said, You are it. It means the dimension of that civilization is supposed to break forth from your life. If people relate with you, live in your house, will they see God? If they will not see God, it means you don't have Jasper. If people come to your office, where you walk, will they see God in your life? If God is not visible, it means there is no Jasper. He wants to be seen. And you are the only hope of him being seen in your generation. Your life must have Jasper, the appearance of God. It is when we set up those systems that the reality of that which is in heaven will begin to find expression through my ministry. Because the new Jerusalem, the Bible says, is descending from heaven. It will descend through my life. It will appear through my ministry. It will appear through my prayers. It will appear through my efforts. That is the whole idea. What appears through your life. I'm going to stop the lecture here so that we can have a moment to pray and also to move in the spirit. If you are still with me, I'd like you to stand on your feet. It's a night of purging and a night of reconnection and a night of renewal. No more Babylon. We are going up to the mountain Zion. 
in a moment i would like you to begin to exercise your spirit in tongues because we are gaining ascendancy we are gaining ascendancy we are gaining ascendancy right now we are gaining ascendancy in the moment we are gaining ascendancy i can't hear you please forget about your neighbor forget about the person standing by your side we are standing on behalf of ghana we are standing on behalf of the body of christ the days of babylon must be numbered and be cut short you are the platform through which jasper can be seen you are the platform Bele suka pata, obre ni no sika, peka i falai kapata ila, mandi ya sika, bredi ya sata kila. For we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit, that rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Can you go ahead and call upon His name? Ila sute kiva, saila balapi, apreti le kia mandi. Ia bela saila tena, kia mende si kivai. Baila suna kie balata, amre kilo suske, ebraka taila kata. Ah, sabila ika, ika ila montela, ile keli a kaila. We have appeared again in Gilgal that the Lord will do a walk of circumcision and remove every false king that is growing upon the heart of men. Ayele Sulaka, Veradia Sobeligas. Season that worship God in the spirit, that rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. For we look unto the Lord. Ile matia bataila baradas, la gradina zilei, zilei la kama, amregedia badaspa, beradia balada. Lagradino si kamala, aye maki e vele. It's a night of pain. It's a night of pain. It's a night of pain. Can you ask the Lord to punch you? For some of us, the Lord is punching. For some of us, the Lord is doing a work of circumcision again. Like Joshua was instructed to circumcise the children of Israel again the second time. In order for you to cross Jordan into the promised land, into the place of inheritance, the circumcision must be done again the second time. Can you cry out to God? Say, Spirit of the Lord. Circumcise my hands. Circumcise my hands. Do a quick walk by your spirit. Let the sword of the spirit pass through my heart again. Let the sword of the spirit let it pass through my heart. Let it pass through my heart. Let the walk of circumcision take place tonight.
offering in righteousness. The fire of the Lord, 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 the
Let your fire locate that one. Let that power from the marine that has held that power, let it be broken now. Let it be broken now. Let it be broken now. Jesus. 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 Fire of God, set them free. Set them free. Power of the marine. Power of marine witchcraft. Marine spirits is broken now. It's broken now. From families. From families. From families. From families. Hey, 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 To my right, there is a fire there. There is a fire there. To my left there, there is fire. There is fire. There is fire. There is fire. Receive it. There is a scripture I want to read that explains what I see the Lord doing in the spirit. Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. He said, Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a stone. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen, and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thy hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. A priest, a man with white linen, was given an instruction to go between the wheels and the cherubims and take coals of fire and scatter it into the city. That's how revival come. It is the sons of Zadok. It is priests, men with white linen that are summoned into the courts of God to take coals of fire and spread it into the city. I want us to lift up a cry in the next five minutes. I want us to say, Lord, we stand as your priest tonight. We go in between the wheels and the cherubims. We take coals of fire and we spread it all over this auditorium, all over the city. We take coals of fire over your mouth and pray. As you pray, the fire of the Lord will begin to engulf people afresh. We stand, we go in between the wheels and the cherubim. With the coals of fire, with the coals of fire, we spread it into the city. We spread it into the city. We spread it. I even the sea of I, sea of the Akombe, Liga Viri Amante, Avia Mantela, Melania Balatwa, I Kombe Liga, Ilega Dia Balata, Melania Monte. Pelaka, Marado, Radia, Sokon, Vila. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I see the Lord anointing people. I see the oil of grace. The oil of grace. Coming upon many. Coming upon many. Coming upon many, the oil and the fire, the oil and the fire, the oil and the fire, let it come upon you afresh, fresh, 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 here in the middle, fresh, your face over there, fresh, there is a fresh oil, there is a fresh fire. That is meant for you tonight. That is meant for you tonight. That you will leave this gathering tonight with fresh, fresh, 
Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. Hey, revive a fire, revive a fire for a new priesthood, for a new priesthood. Yes, yes, yes. A new generation is rising that will repair the broken altar of the Lord. The broken altar of the Lord. The broken altar of the Lord. In the Take it now! Take it now! Fresh! 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 of Jesus. Heavenly order of encounters. Heavenly order of encounters. Your prophetic is going to go beyond mentioning names. You will have visitations of the Lord. I see the Lord will begin to appear to people in dreams and visions of the night. Right now as I speak, he begins to anoint them. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, hey, hey. It's a season for new encounters, visitations of heaven, of heaven, of heaven, of heaven. Yes, 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 yes. Some of you right where you are, the hand of the Lord will come upon you. You'll be caught up into the spirit. You'll be caught up into the spirit. You'll be caught up into the spirit. There is a redefinition to the prophetic going on in Ghana. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, touch the Scipions of the hour. Touch the Annas, the Annas, the Forerunner, the Forerunner anointing, the Forerunner anointing. The forerunner anointing. Let it be released. Let it be released. At the back. At the back. At the back. At the back. Right there. Right there. Right there. Jesus. 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 It's 70 people I see in the spirit. 70 of you. 70 of you. There is a mantle coming upon you. It's a foreign anointing. Like John the Baptist, your appetite will change. Your desires will change. It will no longer be business as usual. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, touch them now. Touch them now. Anoint them now with fire. Men and women that will prepare the way for the visitations of God in Accra, in Ghana, in Africa, across the globe. In the day, there are three people I'm seeing there. Three of you, the man to the fire is coming upon you now. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, 
Oh, there is a mantle of fire. There is a mantle of fire over this gathering tonight. Tonight, 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 tonight. God is consecrating men into a new order of priesthood. Sons of Zadok, foreigners of the last day move of God. Hey, Kailo. Thank I see fire here. I see fire. Bring him. Bring him. Hey, come. Bring a brandy a soul. Valido, okay. Hey, bring that lady. He let me a mokaive. Le grandi a toe. The refiner's fire is coming upon you. Your appetites are going to change. Your desires are going to change. He commanded. He let Kiola. He let the Abondo Ligas. He let the Abala the Abada. He Kabala Tuana. Barania Molos. He let the Abada. Man of God, I see in the Spirit. I see the Lord give you a sword of fire. A burning sword. A flaming sword. A flaming sword. And the Lord says, It's the sword of the Spirit. That as your minister, it will come into the spirit of people. It will set the heart of man on fire. Reviver, 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 reviver. That will begin in a cry and spread across the world. The Lord says, people are going to come across Africa, across the world. to receive revival and fire through your life, through your ministry. And a new love in the miraculous, in the miraculous, in the miraculous, says the Lord. And as I speak now, that sword is entering some people, is entering some people, is entering some people right here, right here. The flaming sword of fire, take, 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 take the flaming sword of fire, of fire, of fire, of fire. A new hunger for the presence of God, for the holiness of God, for the glory of God, for the glory of God. A new hunger for the glory. Prophets of the glory are rising. Prophets that will carry the glory of God. Their utterances will bring the holiness of God, will bring the presence of God. Take. Thanks. Thanks. That fire is entering people. The sword of the Lord. The sword of the Lord. A separation is going on. A separation is going on. It's 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 there are three people I see in the spirit. The Lord is going to bring deliverance to them where they are. Where you were small, there was a sacrifice that was done for you in the waters. And so you see yourself always swimming in a river. You see yourself in the marine world. You see yourself in the marine world. The fire of the Lord is coming to you now. It's bringing you deliverance. It's bringing you deliverance. It's bringing you deliverance. Ah! 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 Ile ile mo. There is a young man behind wearing yellow and black t-shirt. The fire of God is coming upon you now. That altar of witchcraft in your family is destroyed by fire. By fire. By fire. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go. Let them go. Jesus. 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 Let the fresh revival begin in the land. Begin in the land. Begin in the land. 
Beliko masaila. Beli amono no silegi adas. Beli amani ano silagadi avaladata. La gradi la varadia. That young man there, as I speak now, there is a fire over you. There is a fire over you. There is a fire over you. Deliverance is going on. Deliverance is going on. Deliverance is going on. From false prophetic spirit. False prophetic spirit. False prophetic spirit. False prophetic spirit. Kia Mandela Zina. Beli Convida Manana. A new generation is rising. I had a vision yesterday and I saw two beings the moment we came into this auditorium we sat down I saw two huge beings they look like male and female kind and I saw them with long dreadlocks huge very fat long dreadlocks and when I saw that I knew what the Lord was telling me and I saw like the spirits were standing, these beings were standing on a hill and looking into the cities. And the Lord began to speak and said, these are the spirits that bring corruption and pollution. You hear tonight the teaching. I was going to share it with our father, but I just felt a restraint in my heart to hold on. And you hear the teaching about the prophethood of Balaam of Baal and Asteroid. Asteroid is actually a female-like spirit. Baal is the male. And I saw those spirits on the hill looking over the city. And the Lord said, these are the spirits that brought corruption. And as I looked suddenly, I saw like a being dressed in white pass. That's all I saw. I didn't hear anything. And I knew my spirit that that's an angel. I knew that is a restoration of the angel of the prophetic order of heaven that is being enthroned in the city. That is being enthroned in the city. And yesterday the Lord said, I will give you a sign. And then, sir, when you came this morning, you began to teach. Even into this morning, you began to talk about the prophets of Ba and Asherah. These are the twin spirits. And the Lord said, there is a restoration of a new prophetic order of a new prophetic order for Ghana the body of Christ has a destiny to mirror the prophetic dimension of Christ to the nations and as I speak now people will begin to have genuine angelic encounters there are some of you now you will feel that fire come over you that's the fire of the angel of the Lord's presence that's the fire that's the fire the new encounters will begin a prophetic order that will shape the landscape the politics the economy watch out for ghana in the next two years i slept last night and i had a vision and, it, and i saw like a city and i saw something like electric train and i said lord what is this and the lord began to say watch and see prophesy there's an economic shift that is coming in this city there is a change altogether that within now and the next few years we are going to see the things that god will begin to do beginning with the body of christ a new order of priesthood being restored in this nation that is going to affect the economy it's going to affect the entire landscape and that's why the enemy was fighting this conference from home before we came, there was so much warfare. Tonight, the sons of Zadok that will become the foreigners in their priesthood that will prepare the way for these manifestations of God, they are being consecrated in this conference. A holy fire. The jealousy of God is coming upon the heart of men. The jealousy of God is coming upon a new generation. That will hold the sacred things of God against all odds, even at the expense of their lives. Father, thank you. Thank you because Simeon's are rising tonight.
Thank you because Anna's are rising tonight. Thank you because Anna's are rising tonight. That will prepare the way for the Messianic prophecy over Accra and Ghana to be fulfilled. For the Messianic prophecy over families to be fulfilled. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands and give him glory. Oh, Safina Kapala. Ile kruna salagradiska Ila brandi akom vila masaila para pena ha Kaila muna safila ha taila Kaila taila taila Baile mukafina mahadi asodi akapalada Beradi abana ni abana no celebrate ada I just saw a being very white and walking past this place and walking past this place Please hold them. I'm walking past this place. A being wearing white robe, just walking. I'm seeing beings with white, just walking, just walking. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Pouring oil upon people, pouring grace upon people to enter into the new season in God into the next season in God. We came to activate a new season, a new season, a new season. Let a new generation arise. Let a flaming generation arise. People that are jealous for the holiness of God, let them arise from this conference. So hataki pato hadaba, leka teka pro ki pato ya kapa, saka ta ya raba ki pato ya raba raba, iya da iya da 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 bosha hadaba ni baka para ba, iya da ba 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 iya da iya iya. In the name of Jesus. Shall we put our hands together and welcome Minister Teofloss? It's going to stir the atmosphere. Oh, I, I, I can't feel you. Listen, don't be too excited. I, I want you to connect with your spirit. We are almost closing the service. But I'm led to hand over the microphone to the minister. And as you connect with your spirit, that which you have not seen, you begin to see tonight. Just lift up your hands wherever you are. We want to see you, Holy Ghost, again. Feel our country, Holy Ghost, again. We want to see you, Holy Ghost, again. Feel Africa, Holy Ghost, again. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, again. Feel our 
church is holy ghost again. Holy ghost, holy ghost again. Fill our church is holy ghost again. We want to see you, holy ghost again. Feel this country, Holy Ghost, again. We want to see you, Holy Ghost, again. Feel our churches, Holy Ghost, again. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, again.
tonight from the depth of your heart thank him for this great outpouring tonight and his presence just thank him thank him thank him thank him for the encounters tonight give him glory give him praise give him glory give him praise Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord and take your seat. Hallelujah. That is so much in the clouds. And for that matter, tomorrow morning, we'll be here. You are not happy. Sunday morning was not part of the plan. But, like I said, there's so much in the clouds. Therefore, tomorrow, 8 a.m. sharp, we'll be here to meet Jesus. And I pray that you will not miss it for anything. Hallelujah. Tomorrow evening, we'll crown it all. As you already know, the last days of our conference is healing night, manifestation of the power of God, 
healings, prophecy, and many more. Hallelujah. So let's take note. Tomorrow is power packed. Let's prepare our hearts for the service tomorrow. I also want to announce for those of us who are not here on day one that Adulam will be rolling out in Ghana next year. So further details will be given tomorrow before we end the conference. Hallelujah. Shall we please take our offering? Ushers, please help us. We have the presence of the man of God, Pastor Elvis Ajiman in the house. Let's acknowledge him. Man of God, you're welcome. Ushers, please help us quickly. Hallelujah. He's the light of the world, resurrection and life. He's salvation for the sinful and the rest of the worry. Such a wonderful man. He called us to be his friends, to commune with him, to partake of his strength. So we will love him, we will love him, we will love him, we will love him. Come on. Oh, he's the light of the world, resurrection and life. He's salvation for the sinful and the rest of the world. Such a wonderful man. He called us to be his friend, to come on with him, to partake of the strength. So we will love him. We will love him. We will love him. We will love him. Hey, oh, I will bless him and adore him. I will praise his name to the ends of the world. I will love him with my soul and all that is within me.
Let's put our hands together for our daddy and the team as they leave us tonight. Oh, you can do better than what you are doing. Let's keep on clapping. It's a huge sacrifice for the team to be here. If I tell you what they had to go through, you will not believe it. Let's put our hands together for Jesus, for making it possible. Shall we please rise up on our feet? Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., sharp. Let's take notes. We have books out there. We have pen drives. We have other materials. At the same point, you can help yourself when you get to the gate. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. God richly bless you.